We're here. Excellent. Doing the pool thing. All right. Andre, we're dropping you off, bro. Excellent. We right around the corner. Excellent. Get you to your party, man. Yes. Right on time. Right on time? Well, right on time for the party. But the party don't start till you get there anyway, bro. So, it's just, yeah. That's why I'm right on time. <laughs> there you go. How you doing today, good I'm really stuff? good, thank you. Pretty good, yeah. man. You just beautiful day, nothing wrong with that. Oh, man, it's beautiful, right? Yeah. And yes, I am. I Where are you am. from, good sir? From Canada. Canada? Calgary. Calgary. What mm -hmm. brought you out to Boston? I'm speaking at a conference at MIT tomorrow. Oh, wow. So that's uh, I went to grad school out here, so it's uh, nice to be back. I don't, I mean, don't get back very often. Oh, man, what do they have you uh, speaking about? <laughs> do you really want to know? I really yes. want to know <laughs> what. If MIT, if MIT wants you to speak, bro, let me tell you something. I definitely want to know what you speak. So about. I am a politician. You're a politician. I am. I am mayor. Of, I am the mayor of Calgary. The mayor. You're the mayor of Calgary. I got the mayor of Calgary. Oh my God! You this do. is amazing. And at some point after we drop Andre off, I'm going to ask you all about your life as a Lyft and driver. Oh, I'll I'm tell all you about, about taxi my life. regulation. But, really? Um, yeah. Oh, it gets interesting. The plot thickens. <laughs> the plot thickens. The plot thickens. But uh, I was supposed to be speaking tomorrow on the future of urban transportation. The future of urban transportation. But the crazy MIT people just let me know last night that, oh, had they forgotten to tell me that the topic had changed after I already got to Boston? What did it change to? Get this. I am now speaking about the availability of sensors, S-E-N-S-O-R-S, -S, okay. in the urban environment and how they can lead to better decision making. Say that one more time. That exactly. Was, that was what I don't fun. even know. I, act like I, know that <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> what? You can't just tell me to speak on a topic that I don't know anything about. Right, why would they do that? At the last minute, apparently there was a mix-up, and they thought I was an expert in this field. So things like traffic sensors in the road and how they help make plans on how to manage transportation or the sensors let you know what time the next bus or train is coming. Right. So I do know a teensy bit about that, but it's at MIT. I assume that MIT people know more than I do. I think, and things. most people would. And most yeah. people would. So the whole thing is a bit ridiculous. So I may just stick with my old speech. You know what? I think you should do that yeah. because you're a boss. <laughs> exactly. And you get on stage, you're gonna be like, tell them. I think if I'll you're, just be talking. If you're yeah. genuine with the crowd, and be like, they wanted me to talk about this, not really prepared. Mm -hmm. I was prepared for this. If you don't mind. So I'm gonna about talk about this because it's also interesting. So. so let me get this right. You're the mayor of Calgary. Yes. In Toronto, you're the mayor. Yeah. Oh, man, it's a pleasure. And. You are with urban transportation regulations. What's what's yeah? The thing? So well, we are having a very interesting situation right now. Okay. Now you drive for Lyft. Do you I also drive, drive for do you Lyft. Also drive and for Uber? I also drive for Uber. Okay. Yes, I do. So Uber, um, there's no polite way of saying this. Uh, have a, a brilliant business model, and are dicks. Mmm. Now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> Uber, team Ubers are dicks. Now I got my reasons for calling them dicks. Yeah, do you as well? I do. Are they forever but I'm a driver. And, I'm a driver, yeah. so I do agree with the dick shit that you're saying <laughs> yeah. to an extent. But you tell me, being the the mayor of Calgary, what you you probably know something that I don't. Oh, know. they are the worst. Why are they well, Why are they dicks? Really? They are honestly the worst people in the world to do. Uber's the worst people in the world. I have never dealt with people like this before. So explain to me what makes them so. In bad? fact, I, I was at a conference and I met Travis, right? You know, the CEO, and I was like, oh, it's because you're a dick, and this has mm. percolated and it just through the entire the organization. Of the CEO has trickled down. That's uh -huh. what you're saying. Uh -huh. Uh, little dicks. So, you know, they Big come in and they're the most sophisticated people in the world and you regulators don't know what you're talking about and you're in the pockets of the taxi cartel and blah, 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 blah. So, you know, we put in some pretty basic regulations. You like have what? to have insurance. Imagine that. Maybe. Right? So, uh, the driver has to have a valid driver's license. Uh, I guess, <laughs> right? man. You're asking a lot, but okay, you know? okay, okay. These are tough things to all deal right, with, right? right? That sounds fair. You actually have to pay a fee so that we can enforce you because regular cabs don't get subsidized. They have to pay a fee. What kind of fee are we talking here? So this is where the fight started. Yeah. And it, now you're trying to get some of this Uber money, too. That's what people would say. People it has would continued say. for a long time. 
So they want us to do only a per fare um, fee. So six cents per fare or 10 cents per fare or okay. something like that. Okay. Which is fine, except for the fact that I can't hire inspectors and say I'll pay you at the end of the year when Uber pays me. Mm. And so we, um, like most cities, are asking for an upfront payment. Uh, and Uber is claiming that the only way they can do that is to make the drivers pay. So they're saying, so you're going to make us go to every driver, and to become an Uber driver, you have to pay us 200 bucks. And I'm like, well, you could do it like that, or multi-billion dollar Uber. Right. You can front the money from the driver and take it off the driver's fares at 10 cents a fare, yep. instead of making us do it. You could make the people pay, and like a tax? Yeah. Or something like that, right? You know, so or split it, you know, have it. And so, but they just will not negotiate in any way, and they're like, "This is the most egregious thing anyone's ever done." Oh, the other thing, background checks. Background checks. Don't want crazy people. You, you know, don't want sex offenders picking up your 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 high school. Yeah, and so the teenage daughter. They entered Canada illegally. Mm. Um, how, how does one enter illegally with? Uber? They just started. Yeah. Even though it was not legal, and Calgary is the only city. So was where... it illegal though? I mean, well, this was their legal, argument. Yeah, ha! You see, you're thinking uh, like Travis. I'm thinking like Travis. I'm a little bit of a dick too. That's why <laughs> so, I guess we relate. So their argument was, it's not legal, but it's not illegal. Mm. And this argument worked in every city, except Calgary. Except Calgary wasn't playing that. So we okay. took them to court, and we got an injunction, and they're not allowed to operate until. So they operate under the license system. So they're mad at me to begin with. And the co-CEO, a guy called Garrett Cam, is from Calgary. Mm. So he's particularly mad that he can't be in his own city. Right. And uh, so, and so, you know, one of the things was they did start and operated illegally in Calgary for about three weeks or something before we got the court injunction. Right. And we're no fools. So, we sent people to sign up to be Uber drivers to see if they could get through the background check. Mm, just to see how we found registered sex offenders. How and did people you find? I don't want to know. And people with convictions for violent crimes. I don't want to know why we know those people. Wow. I just don't want to know. Nobody will tell me, and I don't want to know. Wow. But they all made it through Uber's theoretical background screening. Wow. And so we were like, you know what, Uber? We're going to do the background screening. I hear you. The cops are going to do the background screening. And they just had to pay, as you probably heard, a $25 million fine in California because their background screening doesn't work. So. Wow. So it, will will there be a happy median found? Yeah, but they're being jerks about it. So because he's a dick, because he's, he's not going out with a fight. If he can fight and try to make it his way, he will. That's exactly right. But in the right. way, he's going to have to be. That is exactly right. So we'll get there eventually. Yeah, but the thing go. that irritates me is Lyft is only in the U.S., right? They haven't gone international yet. Right. So I wrote a letter to the CEO of Lyft saying, so want to come? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Rock We'd be happy to have you because I don't think you're a dick. And, Lyft are, uh, I like Lyft. Yeah. Are they Everybody sticky? likes Lyft. The drivers like Lyft. The riders like Lyft. You know what I'm saying? And uh, But he has not yet responded to my letter but apparently a spokesperson told the media in Calgary now nah, we don't really like those regulations either mm -hmm. so we'll uh, have to, it's all gonna sort itself out right and as it turns out we bought a bunch of time because they finally agreed that you have to have insurance right and the insurance product because they they always claim they had insurance but they would never show us the insurance certificate mm -hmm. and it turns out they didn't have insurance they're just so rich that they were just paying out all the claims themselves. Really? And uh, they finally agreed you need insurance, but the Canadian insurance industry is very slow. Oh. So they have not yet developed an insurance product right. that would work for rideshare. And they just did. So they expect that that product will be approved in May or June. Okay. So we have a bit of time, but I'm hopeful by the time the insurance product is there, they will be there. But there you go. That was my long story. That is, man, that is some like Good Morning America type. <laughs> so now it's good, but I'm interested in your story. My How long story? have you been doing this? Man, I've been doing this a year since uh -huh. June. I dig it. This it is your own car. A lot of opportunities. My own car. Okay. You know, uh, I mean, I, I make the most of it. Do you do it full time? It. I do it full time. Okay. And I am like an Uber. I'm probably like could be an Uber ambassador. 
great. That's how much about the Uber life I am. Do you like it? You enjoy talking to people? I love talking to people. I love making money on my own schedule. Yeah. You know what I mean? And do you make decent money? I do. I do anywhere between, you know, on, on, I'm crying. Uh, By the way, I used, I used to live in that building. You did? Yeah, this hideous building right here. Oh, you know, on days I'm crying, I probably saw 20 now. On days I'm dumping for joy, I probably saw 40. So, uh, fares. Yeah. Okay. Like 40, basically around 40 an hour. I'm with Uber and I'm with Lyft. I haven't done Fasten yet. Yeah, I don't even know them. Fasten is a new one. You might uh -huh. want to, that's a third party. Put you on. It's just for conversations you get with Uber. That's something you might want to reach out to. Fasten? Fasten. Fasten okay. is just in New England. Okay. And there's a third man. And a guy like you trying to get some things done might value some information from a random Uber That's ride. That's very like interesting. That. You know what I mean? So you can make you 40, you, you, you say you make 40 out. an hour? I can. Okay. And you're paying insurance. And that's me. That's after they take their That's stuff. after. After, after, after Uber So take Uber takes their, their whatever, 20%. Yep. And Lyft is less, right? They take a smaller commission? Lyft takes a smaller commission. It's just a little okay. bit less. And, um, and then but you pay your own gas yep. insurance maintenance. Yep. And how did your insurance work? Man, you have private. Let me tell you something, man. Uh -huh. I, I'm just, let's just say I got insurance, and if anybody asks you, I know you, and this ain't no Uber ride. Got it. That's, you know what I'm saying? That's what we just fully, gonna do it like that, understand. my fully man. Understand, yeah. You know, we just keep it funky like that, Mr. Mayor. That's why I'm sitting in the front seat. Yeah, okay, exactly, because yeah. we're all friends, <laughs> and this is just a casual ride. Sure. <laughs> in your very cool Lexus, I like thank it. Thank you, good sir. I appreciate it. Look. Fly, recognize, fly. I see you put your little shades on. You know, looking cool, Mr. Mel. You know, I'm gonna I, write I keep fly, recognize, recognize, fly. Look, fly, that recognize, fly. Line. You tell, you tell them that Mr. John Bravo put you on weight. You know I what like I mean? It. That's how we roll, man. That that is oh, my new man. favorite line. I'm gonna use that. Fly, forever. recognize, fly, man. I think I'd say fly no fly. Fly no fly. <laughs> See, they just take it takes a See, man, it takes a boss. You. You. It takes a boss to just bossify a phrase. <laughs> you know. Why do I see Fry Recognize Fly on your? Screen? That's a group. That's a group chat. Oh, so you oh, that's you funny. said that? Yeah, it's a group chat. Okay, that's yeah. cool. So you just wrote that? Yeah, man. Okay, that's cool. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So you speaking? When they had you speaking? When? Yeah. Uh, tomorrow at one o'clock. Tomorrow. I think. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I've got uh, I've got some good friends out here. Um, good. In Somerville, that's where I'm going tonight. Oh, there you go. So, is that where I'm taking you? Yeah. Okay, cool. So we're not too we're far from Somerville. Dinner. We'll probably be another 12 minutes of the traffic. Yeah, traffic's heavy at this time. Man, traffic's right. heavy every time in Boston. Yeah. That's another thing. I personally think we should be getting way more money, especially when it's time to traffic or bad weather. Oh, um, because on the lift line, it's flat, right? Man, that lift line, man, it's it's, it's not always good. Like, just say I picked him up first, uh -huh. then I picked you up. If I had to drop you off first, that's really just prolonging my yeah. ride. With you, you're on our way. So you know what I mean? If it's A, B, A, B, then maybe I got an extra mile and a half out the ride. But I don't think they give you the full price of it. They just charge you an additional one and a half as right. opposed to what the price would have been with two separate rides. So, you know. I stay on the grind with it. That's cool. So let me ask you, man. Who 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 do you like with the with the presidential thing going on? Coming from a mayor, I'd love your opinion. Of what's going on? <laughs> you really want? I really want the mayor of Calgary's opinion when it comes to Hillary well, Trump let's and the way. burn. This is where I went to school at the Kennedy okay, School of Government. Okay, you went to Kennedy so, School of Government. So I am um, obsessed with U.S. politics. Really? Obsessed. So I would love yeah. your opinion of, of what we have going on right now well, with all of this. So I'll start with my upfront bias. Okay, please. Which do. is I know Hillary a little bit, uh -oh. and uh, not like we're not buddies. No, 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 no. You, I mean, but I, I've seen her speak a few times because she came here when I was speaking here. So I've been following her career for a long time, and and I'm a fan. Okay. So that's my upfront bias. Okay. But um, I think that she has not done a great job in her campaign of letting people sort of see who she is. Mm. Like who she is personally. Yeah. Mm. You know, and it's been very um, almost contrived, you know, and it's it doesn't feel real. And I think that has a lot to do with our friend Bernie, 
and why he's so popular because there's nothing contrived about that guy, right? <laughs> what you see is what you guess. You guess. Absolutely. You're absolutely um, right about that. And, uh, and, I, and I like him. I like him fine. Yes, but, uh, my man. Going to Lampoon? It's a pleasure, brother. Yes, Sam. Hey, enjoy your okay. friends, man. It's always oh. good to have good friends. <laughs> nice man. to see you. Sorry we were chatting you up so much. No worries, Take no worries. Care. It was awesome. Remember the joke I told you, bro? Yes. yes. He's meeting with a bunch of comedians. Is he? Yeah. Oh, that's the Lampoon building. So, I always think it looks like a face. I don't know if that's on purpose or not. Yeah. So now I'm taking you. So... So in any case, I, I like Bernie fine. I, I don't think he's ready to be president. But I think he's done a great thing by getting young people engaged and interested. Right. In the whole thing. And then there's the Republican side. Oh, and that's why I really wanted your what opinion. What the... Hell. <laughs> is this the best, the greatest country on earth can come up with man. for one of their major parties? Look, preach. What do you think, man? Okay, we got so Don Ted Cruz. Yeah, our, talk to me. Do you know man. Ted Cruz is from Calgary? He'd be the first Canadian president of the United States. He was born know. in Calgary. I don't know if Americans know that. I don't know how we feel about that. Yeah, Trump knows it. He always mentions he it. He does. He does. Okay. Yeah, okay. he's from Calgary. Wow. So literally, like up the street from City Hall is where he was born. And so I'm like, mm, if he wins, I should buy that. Right, and right. To the presidential birthplace. Right. <laughs> but, um, but he's a scary man. He is a scary he man. Is way I, scarier. All I think is, is the Omen. The movie, remember that movie, The Omen? <laughs> you remember that? I'll say it. You can't say it because you're the man. I'll say it. He, he reminds me of like Damien, all grown up. And I'm like, bro, Ted Cruz, yeah. no way creepy and like I think much more dangerous than Trump what because do you think the biggest danger is Trump is a blowhard right right and no one will actually do anything he says right but when Cruz says I'm gonna carpet bomb the Middle East he's actually going to try to do that I want what was the famous line I don't know if sand glows but we'll find out oh my god he said that he said that so he is, I think, right. much, much scarier than Trump. Right. Because Trump is, I mean, I think that Trump is um, never expected this. Like, he thought that he would make a splash, get some publicity, maybe move the policy debate a little bit. But he did not expect this. You don't think so? No, you I don't think, think you so. Didn't, you don't think Trump thought he'd get this far? No, I, I don't think so. But I think now that he is this far, now he can taste it. Mm. And so he's like, okay, this can actually happen, right? Mm. There was a woman who worked for him who wrote kind of an expose a month or so ago. She was one of his media people. Mm -hmm. And she fully said that. She said when she was hired last summer, they were explicitly hired with the goal of making him come third so that he got a whole bunch of publicity mm. and went on with his life. And then she quit the campaign when it became clear that they might actually win. Right. And she was scared. But she was also scared of how everyone in the campaign was changing, thinking they could actually win. Right. So, I mean, the stuff he says is crazy, right? We're going to build that wall and Mexico's going to pay. But, and you know, I'm Muslim, so I keep joking that I better come to Boston now. Because right. once he becomes mayor, I'm going to be bad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You ain't going <laughs> I think I'm going to make it to the airport. Yeah, and I'm just like, <laughs> how exactly are you going to check at the airport <laughs> what my religion is? Um, so, so yeah, they're a, uh, but I don't, but A, he could never do half the stuff he's talking about, and B, I'm not convinced he actually wants to do half the stuff he's talking about. Mm. Okay. But what I think will happen is the Republican Party will try every trick in the book to deny him the nomination at the convention, hmm. and that will destroy the Republican Party. Because okay. half the people will say, well, he's the nominee. How can you deny him, right? And the other half will say, he's crazy. So if that happens, I think the Democrats get a crushing landslide historical victory in November. Okay, so what's the flip side of that? Well, the danger, of course, is that if somehow the Republicans end up splitting the vote in a weird way, 
and taking away from the Democrats as well, you could end up with a very random president. Hmm. What if it's like Paul Ryan? You know, come out of nowhere. And I don't even know who that is. Speaker of the House. Okay. Crazy. Um, no, not that crazy. It's like crazy. And uh, so, I don't know. Now, what do you think? You've been... You probably listen to people talk about this I think, all day. Yeah, man. I mean, I mean, normally when I, I like to joke with my customers, I tell them that I support Trump, and then I just go and I see how they go. <laughs> but I mean, truthfully, man, I'm gonna tell you where I'm at. I'm just gonna write Obama's name in again and hope for the best. <laughs> you know, that's, that's that's just how I feel right now. You know what? <laughs> He's been a remarkable president. Is he? Asked, and it's man. so funny. It's taken until the very very end. For people to actually notice. You don't know what you got till it's gone, man. Yeah, that's it. You don't know what you got till it's gone, man. And, uh, you people know, you think about that. the fact that he has not had, in eight years, he has not had one scandal. Mm -mm. He has not had one cabinet secretary have to resign. Mm -mm. Nothing, mm -mm. right? None of that. And, uh... None of that. And he's just, I mean, as far as I can tell... Just a decent, ethical, smart guy who, you know, and you can agree or disagree with his policies, but there is no question that he's in it for the right reasons and trying to do good in the world. Yep. Absolutely, man. But at the end of the day, I like Bernie Sanders. I do too. He just reminds me of like my physics professor. Yeah. You know what I mean? And my physics professor was cool, real smart guy. I mean, you like I said, he's he's kind of unorthodox. I just we've had a certain type of president, and I think that America could do four years with a guy like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I, I totally think, agree with you. I think that's like getting an Apple user in the office. Yeah, yeah, I understand exactly what you mean. You know what I mean? So. I just wish that the world was a bit more prepped for it. You know, because people have just woken up to it now and said this is a possibility. I think. Bernie himself is probably not ready, right. and the world is not ready for him. Right. So, you know, I wish that this had been a realistic thing. Like, you look at our new Prime Minister, I don't know if you're familiar with him, extremely handsome. Mm -hmm. And last week, uh, he was at a university, and he gave a mini-lecture on quantum computing, mm -hmm. and it made every newspaper in the world. Handsome Prime Minister talks about science. Right, right, <laughs> right? right. And, um... And he's a big, big change for us. He was elected in October. But we were sort of ready for it because we had the old guy for 10 years and people were sick of it. And they were like, I'm willing to take a rest, scan, try this young, handsome guy and see what happens. Um, and I feel like in the U.S. with the system with Congress and everything... You have to be ready for a big change. Mm -hmm. You know, Obama was a big change, and they were kind of ready for it right after eight years of GW. Right. And I just wonder if the world is prepped for Bernie. But that said, it's only April. So you got till November to get ready for that. So we'll see. But I don't think, I think the numbers are against him. I don't think he's got enough runway in order to win the nomination. Right. I think her early lead was too big. But I could be very wrong about that. Hmm. It's a bit like, uh, see, Obama started so early in 2008. Right. And by the time Hillary noticed what was going on, she couldn't catch up. Right. And I think it's similar here. And, you know, she did very well in New York um, last year, I guess on Tuesday. And so her lead is getting bigger and bigger. And if she does really well in, now California is not until the first week of June. Right. But if she wins California... There's no way Bernie can catch up. She'll have the delegates she needs before the convention. Hmm. But I hope that he'll, even if he loses the nomination, I hope he will somehow stay involved and keep pushing, pushing, pushing. Right. But he's a, I like listening to him talk. Yeah, man, you know me too. You know, first he's fun to listen to because that Bronx accent is awesome. <laughs> um, but he says stuff that makes sense. And he does. That he does, but like you said, man, I think there's just so many people who are not going to support him because they just don't think it's worth it. Yeah. And that's sad, too. That is sad. We don't and have faith in our power as a people, you know? And it's a democracy. You really do have that power. Yeah, man.
Yeah, that's the, you know, when I ran for office, I was very much, you know, unknown as a university professor. Mm-hmm. I guess I was a bit like Bernie, not didn't teach physics though. And, um, and a lot of young people got very excited and we got a lot of people, like my favorite thing in the world is when someone comes up to me and says, you know, when I voted for you, it was the first time I ever voted. Yeah. So I always ask them the same question, which is, well, there's been several elections since then. Did you vote in all of them? Right. And they almost always say yes. So they may be lying to me, but I love that, um, that they always say yes. And uh, so for me, I just hope that even if Bernie doesn't win, the people are the young people who are voting for the first time, getting involved for the first time, are not so frustrated. Right. This building right here. Yeah. And um, that they'll stay involved. Man, so it was we'll a see. pleasure. It was what a great uh, conversation. Can Thank I, you. Can I get a lifty with you, man? Sure. It's like a selfie. For lift. I, I just made that. I just made that word up, man. It. I got a trademark there. It's a lifty. I'll yeah. be buying that one too. Absolutely. By the way, what is going on here? This is interesting. This is a this is just live stream, man. Uh-huh. These are just my friends on all just over the world you. just talking. And they'd be like, dude, what do you do when you Uber? And I'd be like, dude, this is what I do when I Uber. They want to see it. Yeah, I want one too. Oh man, absolutely. Absolutely, right, man. This is this is look, everybody like hi mayor. Look, everybody like say hi, hi to mayor. <laughs> so how are you are you man. like texting as we're talking? No, they're texting me. Awesome. Hey man, let me give you my card, man. I love it. You don't got one, do you? Uh, I do. I do. Or do I? Did I leave them in my hotel room? I didn't think I would need them coming for a dinner at my no friend's house. No worries, man. You never know, Mayor. You never know what you're running to. Let me man. see if I got one in the pocket. It was an honor and a pleasure. I got other people's cards. Well, I don't need that, That's man. That's no good. Oh, I don't. Too bad. Hold on. But man. I will take yours. Yeah, man. What's your email? It is, believe it or not, the mayor. The mayor. <laughs> at calgary.ca. The mayor at calgary.ca? Yeah. And I'll leave you to Google the correct spelling of my name. Yeah. Just cal- type in Calgary Mayor. It's Nahid Nenshi. Well, you would have had that on the list, so. All right, man. What a pleasure to meet you. Pleasure, bro. Thanks so much. Thanks for all your help on this. That. Absolutely. Who knows? Man. I may get that one of my guys who's working on the Uber regulations to give you a call. You'll hear from me, man. All right, take care. All right, bruh. Y'all.